I'm Jordan Jenga, host of The Auto Show. Each show will talk about what's new in the industry and what's going on in the local automotive landscape. We'll have interviews with the area dealers and experts and bring you presentations and reviews on some of the latest cars, trucks, and SUVs. In this show, we interview Brian Benoit of the Anchor Auto Group and Carl Tasca Jr. of the Tasca Auto Group. We'll bring you presentations on the new Mercedes-Benz C300 from BD Mercedes-Benz in Tiverton, the new Acura Integra from Speedcraft Acura in Warwick. We'll also give you a rundown on our top 10 luxury and exotic vehicles available in the area from Priority Premium in Middletown. And in our Top Shop segment, we look at Check Collision, a certified Toyota collision center. But first, let's start off with some news. A lot of interesting news in the automotive world. Today, we're going to start off with the 2023 redesign of the Honda CRV. Now, the new CRV is going to come with 190 horsepower turbo 1.5 liter. It kind of comes with everything in the Honda lineup as its base engine, CBT transmission, obviously available in both front wheel and all wheel drive trims. They also uh, have a 204 horsepower hybrid powertrain optional. It's got a nine inch touchscreen. And for the first time ever, according to Honda, the hybrid model can tow up to about a thousand pounds. Toyota has announced an all-new model, the Toyota Crown. They're calling it a lift-up sedan. Uh, it's all-wheel drive capable, uh, available hybrid powertrain. Uh, one has 236 horsepower, the other has 340 horsepower, and they call that the hybrid max engine. Ooh. Uh, we are going to get the what's called the lift-up sedan. You can see here on the screen, which is uh, a little reminiscent of like maybe the Honda Cross Tour uh, as far as like ride height goes. It's not like a low sedan. They also are going to release a crossover, a small sport SUV and a regular sedan. But we don't know if we're going to get those here in the U.S. Um, it also has an available adaptive suspension. They haven't really released too much information on it, but we're looking forward to seeing what uh, what Toyota has to offer. In other exciting news, Cadillac has announced a new model, the Cadillac Celestique. It's very, very interesting looking. Uh, they haven't given us much detail. Uh, it's going to possibly have up to a thousand horsepower. It is all electric. Uh, it's going to be a possible $300,000 price tag. They're kind of shooting for kind of the Rolls Royce Bentley guys. And it's all hand built, customized by the customer and has something called Ultra Cruise, which is just a stepped up version of Super Cruise. We're going to find out a lot more about that uh, as uh, time rolls on here. So these are the photos the Cadillac has released uh, just based on the concept vehicle. Uh, they're saying that it's going to be fairly similar to production. Uh, I don't know how much of that is true, but if it looks anything like this, I think it's going to be a very, very interesting car. Back to Honda. Uh, Honda has announced the new Civic Type R. Uh, it's got more restrained styling than before, the same 2-liter turbocharged engine and a 6-speed manual transmission, which we all love. Um, no specific output of the engine from Honda yet, but it says it will be the most powerful Civic Type R ever. I know uh, in the Japanese domestic market, it was 316 horsepower. So let's hope for more than 317 horsepower. Um, it still has the three exit exhaust in the back, which is unique to the Civic Type R. It still has the cool wing um, and it's still, uh, it's still a real uh, a treat at the track. Very exciting news from Ford. Uh, they're releasing the new Raptor R, 700 horsepower, 640 foot-pounds of torque. They have the 10-speed transmission. And yes, if you were thinking these figures were similar to the GT500, you would be correct. Uh, this is the engine from the GT500, but just tuned specifically for the Raptor R and how much extra weight it has. I know they have a different supercharger pulley and, of course, a couple of different, uh, different tuning things. It has Fox Racing shocks. Uh, it has a specially tuned torque converter. Obviously, it's heavier than a GT500. Uh, and it is lighter than a Ram TRX, if you were thinking it's somewhat similar. Uh, Recaro seats, one pedal drive, uh, and it also has trail turn assist, which they have on the Bronco and a couple of their off-road um, models. Really excited to see this one out on the road. The Anchor Auto Group has served and been involved with the local community for over 35 years. We also make a difference by putting you first. Check out our reviews from our ever-expanding family of Anchor customers. From our service team to our state-of-the-art facility, you'll receive five-star treatment. During the current inventory shortage, we've worked day and night to ensure we have the best assortment of new and pre-owned vehicles in New England. We hear this every day. 
Wow, there's no shortage here, and you have more vehicles than any other dealers. Want to find your next vehicle quickly? Then get to Anchor Subaru Nissan on Route 146 in North Smithfield or online at anchorautogroup.com. There will come a time when our lives will be back to normal. In the meantime, we're doing everything we can to keep our employees, our customers, and the community safe. We're keeping our service departments open because more than ever, you need reliable transportation. And our sales departments are open by appointment. We're doing new car deliveries right to your door. And we're doing all of this because as always, our top priority is you. Today we're going to take a look at the new 2023 Acura Integra and we're here with Keith from Speedcraft Acura to tell us more about it. Keith, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So Keith, it's a pretty neat car. Uh, it's been a while since the Integra has been back on the block. Uh, what can you tell us about it? Brand new redesign. It's great, especially for the active lifestyle individual. So we've got a couple of different things here, Keith. Um, we can get it with the six-speed manual and the CVT. So tell us the difference between those two. Yeah, so you're both being front-wheel drive. So with the, uh, the CVT, since that one's up top, CVT automatic uh, transmission. And then uh, if you want to have a little bit more fun, more control, then you can opt in for the six-speed manual transmission. So start with the front of the vehicle here, Keith, and kind of move us around and tell us what's uh, what's the redesign. The big diamond uh, frameless grille uh, directs and diverts the air to the necessary parts of the vehicle. You get the jewel LED headlight, which gives it a nice elegant look. All right, let's take a look at the new interior on the Integra. Ooh. We'll start at the screen. You're going to get a couple options. Seven inch for the lower trim, and then you do get a little bit bigger screen for the uh, with the tech package. You're gonna get the heads up display, uh, which is really nice, especially uh, it does not just keep your head forward, eyes looking up. Jordan, we got here the uh, the Integra powertrain, which is front wheel drive, engine is 1.5 liter, 200 horses, 192 uh, foot pounds of torque. Uh, it feels fantastic, especially when you're going through uh, all six gears for sure. Well, Keith, we're really looking forward to seeing these new Integras on the road. I know I really like the design of them. Um, thanks so much for coming down and uh, being with us today and telling us about the new Integra. Very welcome, thank you for having me. Uh, it's gonna be a great hit. You already can see some on the road now, your flavors between the automatic or the six speed. Uh, tough to get the six speed to come test drive. Anytime you wanna come in and come drive the six speed again, always come on down. Appreciate it Keith, thanks for being here. Very welcome. With Elman's exclusive custom vehicle order program, you'll not only get the exact vehicle you want, you'll save money too. With our exclusive CVO program, you can order exactly the vehicle you want. You choose exterior color, the interior color, the seats, the package, the trim, the options, the wheels, everything. In addition to receiving special CVO discounts, you'll also be price protected. With prices going up, you'll be locked in at the lower price. Custom vehicle ordering exclusively at Elmwood Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Some of you may know Mercedes-Benz came out with the new Mercedes C300 or just the C-Class in general. Um, C sedan is the first one to be released and we're here today with Sean to uh, kind of give us a run through of all of the updates. Uh, Sean's from VD Mercedes-Benz in Tiverton. Uh, Sean. Thanks Jordan for having me today and um, yeah we're excited about the new 2022 C300. It's the fifth generation of the C300. The C300 originally came out in 1993 was known as their entry level uh, sedan for Mercedes-Benz. They do have a couple uh, models that uh, are their entry level vehicles now. So the C, I guess you could say the C300 has kind of grown up a little bit. You can see they've made it into a, a young person's car. It's, it has a nice sporty look to it. And uh, when we go into the vehicle further and we look into the technology, you'll see the technology is, um, is probably one of the best, uh, has the best technology in the uh, automotive industry. Um, you can see it has a nice sporty back with the uh, LED taillights and the, uh, the FA dual, uh, dual exhaust there. Something that really pops out is you have the 11.9 uh, inch uh, media touchscreen media screen here, which is right in the front. 
Also, if you see here, you have your um, thumbprint ID. So what you can do is you can set up where, um, it's tough to see there, but you can actually uh, put your fingerprint that uh, will only let you get into the, uh, into the certain settings of, of the vehicle. You can have your own personal settings set up and then you can use your fingerprint to get into those, to those settings. Absolutely. I think that's a really, really smart looking interior. And um, if you want to just go to the night mode, you can see the uh, ambient light in action. Wow. That's pretty. That's every, and that's, that's a standard feature with the uh, Mercedes-Benz C300 is the uh, 64 ambient lighting. That's, you know, they've had this for a few years now with uh, other models and it's always everybody's favorite feature. At night, you have, again, you can change the different colors. There's 64 colors that you can change, but it's a nice, soothing, um, and also very luxurious uh, premium feel that it, that it gives. One of the big things for the 2022 uh, C300 is they've uh, added the 48-volt uh, electric hybrid in it, so it's a mild, it's considered a mild hybrid engine, um, which, you know, some of the advantages of that is uh, fuel economy. You know, the other nice feature is that you have different uh, driving modes that you can put the car into. You can put it into comfort, which is the most popular. You can put it into uh, econ mode, so it drives with, the vehicle drives more economically. Uh, then you have sport and you have sport plus. Great. Sean, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Priority Premium is New England's destination for exceptional Highline pre-owned automobiles. Our collection is hand-picked by New England's top automobile experts. With over 100 years of overall experience working with the world's finest brands, we find the best examples of well-maintained, low-mileage, luxury, and exotic vehicles for our inventory. Just go to PriorityPremium.com where you'll see our current selection. Stop dreaming, start driving. Priority Premium. Big banks sure do love technology but not always for the right reasons. We love technology too, but we use it to make your life easier, not ours. Which is why we have Big Bank Tech without the Big Bank. It's what happens when your customers are your owners and your owners are your customers. Navigant Credit Union. Priority Premium is New England's destination for exceptional pre-owned automobiles. Our collection is hand-picked by New England's top luxury and exotic automobile experts. With over 100 years of overall experience working with the world's finest motor cars, we currently have over a dozen pre-owned Porsches, plus models from Audi, Bentley, BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Mercedes-Benz. See our current selection online at PriorityPremium.com. Welcome. Can I help you find anything? Yes. We're looking for something... spacious. Comfortable. With the latest technology. I think I've got just what you're looking for. Follow me. Welcome to the newly redesigned Toyota of Dartmouth. This puppy was made for you. The new Toyota of Dartmouth. It's just what you've been looking for. Please don't do that. One of my favorite segments of the show uh, is when we pick our 10 Highline exotics that are our favorite ones. And for that, of course, we go to Priority Premium. And to start off, we have uh, a 2008 Aston Martin Vantage convertible. I'm a huge fan of these. Uh, if you've ever seen one uh, or heard one in person, they sound fabulous. Uh, this particular model, 4.3 liter V8, 380 horsepower. It doesn't sound like a lot. It's not a very big car. It moves out plenty. I've driven these. Um, I love the wheels, black leather interior. These are handmade in England, uh, and it's, it's an Aston Martin. It's synonymous with James Bond. When I saw it was $54,000, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was going to get home my checkbook. Um, but these are, these are really interesting cars. This particular model, 26,000 miles. Uh, it does have the sport shift transmission, which is an automated manual. Um, I'm just a huge fan. Next up, we have this 2009 Audi R8. It's 4.2 liter V8. Uh, it's Quattro, so it's all-wheel drive, obviously from Audi. We have black on black, which is really neat. This is the car, I think, from um, Iron Man. Uh, 4.2 liters, 420 horsepower. It does have the uh, beautiful display, like a, like a watch almost, a display case back, if you will, for the 4.2 liter engine, much like a Ferrari or any kind of mid-engine car. The engine is behind you in this. 
Um, it does have the automatic transmission, backup camera, and this one's only 89,900. I mean, these are just the coolest looking cars. Next up is this 2016 Bentley Continental GT Speed Coupe. Uh, the Speed being the faster version of the GT Continental line. Um, this has a W12 twin turbo engine, just like a normal Continental would, if you can call it Continental normal. Uh, and this has 626 horsepower. That's right, 626 horsepower, zero to 60 in four seconds. And this particular car will do 206 miles an hour claim manufactured top speed. It's got a really, really, really neat interior. I don't know if anybody does interiors better than Bentley. Um, now this car is on sale for $136,900 at priority and new. These were way over $200,000 with options over a quarter million. So, I mean, it's only a 2016 200 mile an hour car, W12 twin turbo. It says Bentley on it. What more can you ask for? Another one of my favorites is this 2014 Bentley Continental GT V8S Coupe. Now this one has the V8 engine, but don't let that fool you from the W12. This car does zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds. And let's look at the colors. Of course, at Bentley, it can't be blue on gray or blue on tan. It's thunder metallic on linen. Uh, this vehicle has an outstanding uh, interior and because it is the GT V8S, it has bespoke wheels, it has a darker grille. Uh, and a bespoke interior as opposed to the, you can't say lower Continentals, but different Continentals that are non-S and non-GT. Even comes with a Breitling clock, of course. It's a Bentley. Uh, this vehicle only has 3,000 some odd miles, uh, if you can believe it, all the way from 2014, 3,600 miles. Um, four liter twin turbo V8 engine, eight speed automatic transmission, and this one's only offered at 129,900. These were way over 200 when they were new. Beautiful interior, beautiful car, great performance. Another really interesting one that I really, really enjoy is we have the 2020 F-Pace SVR. This isn't just any regular F-Pace. Uh, this is Jaguar's kind of super fast SUV, like an X5M or a Mercedes AMG. And Jags are just cooler because they're a Jag. Uh, we've got the quad exhaust, 542 horsepower. It sounds amazing. Supercharged V8. It's all wheel drive. So in all the terrible New England weather or where, wherever you are, if it's raining off the line, it's still snappy. Uh, this is just a really neat vehicle. It comes with uh, special wheels, lowered suspension. This one has the roof racks on it. Um, I really like this car. $79,900, which is a bargain based on what they used to cost. Uh, this particular model, 15,000 miles. And these, again, I know I keep going on and on about zero to 60, but zero to 60 in about four seconds in an SUV that looks like that. I think it's a pretty great deal. Another interesting vehicle here, we have a 2019 Maserati Gran Turismo Convertible Sport. It's got the Ferrari derived 4.7 liter V8. Uh, it's 450 odd horsepower or nears makes no difference. This one's a convertible, so you can show off to your friends. Uh, it has blue brake calipers, and if no one's ever heard one of these, do yourself a favor, hop on YouTube and listen to the exhaust. This car, it makes such a wonderful noise. Paddle shift transmission, uh, and you get to say, oh, I'll be arriving in my Maserati. Great spec on this car. It's only 96.9, 36,000 miles, black on black. What more can you ask for? Another exciting car, 2016 Mercedes-Benz AMG GT S Coupe. Uh, red brake calipers, gray. It has the red interior. I really like the spec on this car. It's not shouty, it's elegant. Uh, 503 horsepower from the twin turbo four liter V8 in this car. Another car, zero to 60, under four seconds. Uh, and the S gives you the, uh, the spoiler, some more performance, slightly different suspension, the wheels. Uh, this car coming in at $99,900. I mean, just look at it. The long hood, the short overhang in the back, that classic Coke bottle shape. It has the Designo uh, gray exterior, 16,000 miles on this one. Uh, and it's one of my all time favorite Mercedes-Benz products. What exotic collection can be complete without a G-Wagon? Uh, 2013. G63 AMG. Again, another car that sounds great. We've got the side exhaust pipes here, AMG wheels. And for those of you not in the know, this side body line here, the G-Wagon, even in the AMG trim, can wade water up to that point. These little vents here being the air intake. 
Now, this is a vehicle that has presence. This one's $97,900. If we scroll down a little bit here, we can see that has 22,000 miles on it. That's very low for a 2013 Mercedes. I saw this one in person, started it up. You just, it, the command, commanding view you have when you drive one of these is just like no other. You gotta get down and drive one of these. One of my all time favorites. Here's another really interesting one, uh, especially in uh, today's current car climate, is this 2021 Mercedes S-Class. Uh, it's the S580 4Matic. Uh, now, if you go to a Mercedes-Benz dealer, it's gonna be a little while to get one of these, as this is the brand new body style uh, and the redesign for Mercedes-Benz. And the 580 is currently top of the range. Uh, it's the pinnacle of success. When you see an S-Class, there's no question that the person driving it does well. This is a beautiful car, it's a very unique color. Um, they're pretty hard to come by, especially in the S580 trim. Uh, and I really like the interior on this. It's got, uh, I don't believe that's the Dizinho interior, but you see the nice beautiful wood wheel. Uh, and one thing Mercedes-Benz does uh, super, super well is uh, at nighttime, the ambient lighting in the vehicle is outstanding. Uh, this car has so many interesting little uh, technological advances and tricks, the S-Class, has always been, you know, if you want to buy a luxury sedan, the one to buy has always been the S-Class. Moving on, another Mercedes-Benz, a 2016 SL 550 Roadster. Now, a lot of these were 400s. The 550 is the more powerful variant. Uh, 13,000 miles on this example, black exterior, and uh, kind of rare. It's got the Bengal red interior, which I've always been a fan of. Um, there are a lot of wheel options for these, and these uh, AMG 5-spokes are my personal favorite. I think a, a 5-spoke always offers uh, a sportier look than a multi-spoke wheel, and this is a sporty car. Um, I, re I really, really like these from a cruising perspective. Uh, they don't have a super harsh ride, and when you want them to be snappy, they can be extremely snappy and fast. It has na factory navigation. Uh, and again, I really, really like the red interior. This one's offered $73,900 at priority. So those are my 10 top picks for our premium and luxury and exotic brands. Uh, you can always find them down at Priority Premium if you're in the market for a luxury used vehicle or a sporty Highline vehicle. And they're located in Middletown on West Main Road, right in the Hyundai of Newport showroom. There will come a time when our lives will be back to normal. In the meantime, we're doing everything we can to keep our employees, our customers, and the community safe. We're keeping our service departments open because more than ever, you need reliable transportation. And our sales departments are open by appointment. We're doing new car deliveries right to your door. And we're doing all of this because as always, our top priority is you. We're here today with Carl Tasca to talk about the uh, standing in the automotive industry. Carl, thanks, yeah. for, uh, thanks for being on. Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. A lot's going on. A lot's going on in the world. A lot's going on. Uh, I've aged 20 years in the last two. <laughs> but, um, you know, Jordan, back in the day, I was told by a very smart man, one of my mentors, that in the car business, you do with the same five problems. Okay? And if you, can over if you can figure out how to overcome those five problems, you'll be fine. You'll have a great career. That didn't include... Uh, pandemics, the threat of nuclear war, chip shortages, wiring harness shortages, uh, civil insurrection. So there's been a lot going on. But uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I have to start our time together by thanking uh, the men and women I work with, my family and my extended family, um, the members of my team, because what we've been through and what we've been able to get through together in the last two and a half years has been incredible. You will be satisfied is what we try to live by. It's, it's, our, it's our, our family commitment. And as we continue to grow, because we want to keep growing, our most important thing we need to hold on to is our culture. And that doesn't exist in a book, even though my grandfather wrote a book, called you will be satisfied. It doesn't exist in a book. It doesn't exist on something nice on a wall or a website. It exists in your people. So, you know, we've been through a lot the last couple of years. And the only reason we've gotten through it is because of the men and women that come through these doors. It's one thing to work it's one thing to work on a team, but there's something about it being family. And there's something about having that shared experience where we both know what our grandfather would have done. Everyone says they're a family business, you know, and that doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily a good thing, okay? <laughs> it's not necessarily a good thing, you know. Uh, Herb Chambers, one of the most successful dealers in the country, said to me once that uh, partners are for dancing and families are for Thanksgiving. 
So <laughs> a family business brings its own unique challenges. But um, what makes us unique is we have that next generation coming up. So we have Bob the Four, Austin, Cameron, Dylan, Mark Jr., you know, my kids, my kids, my, Michael's kids, DJ's kids. So it's, it's very rewarding to, you know, we're trying to run the company, trying to grow the company, do the right thing. And you want to do the right thing for the people who have come before you, for your grandfather, you know, for your dad, for your uncles. But when you have your kids watching you do it, it's a whole different level of responsibility. My cousins and I, we have such a responsibility to the men and women in this company because they saw how my grandfather did it and they saw how my father did it. You know, one thing that I noticed was people became very understanding of the challenges just of doing business in general. And our customers were able to work with us. And, and for better or worse, we got through the last two years. But especially the pandemic, it caused a lot of things that should have already happened to happen in my industry. So the level of transparency today in buying a car, it's the best it's ever been. And some things are harder, but overall, the level of information available to the customer right now versus five years ago puts the customer in such a position of power when they walk into the company, walk into the dealership, where they know they can literally go online, they can spec up the car, they can see the price. You know, the car's pretty much sold for MSRP, so the, 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 they know what the price is. They don't have to worry about coming in and all these different hoops to jump through. They can see what their car's worth, because with the shortage of cars, what do dealers want? We need inventory. So a dealer has made it so easy for the consumer to know what their car is worth now. Because at one point customers couldn't come to the dealership as easily because of the different COVID restrictions, we had to start selling cars remotely. And we haven't stopped. So that's been something that is, it's been a change. The good thing is, and there's another saying I'll hit you with, is the best way to sell more cars is to make it easier for people to buy cars. It's, it, it's this steering towards a transaction. So we've adopted it, we've, we've, we've spent more time and money than I care to talk about, about redoing our websites, redoing our procedures, redoing how we train our people. Uh, but the best part is, if you read my grandfather's book that came out I think in 92 or 93, and look at how he, wants this, how he wanted to sell a car then, and compare it to how we're selling cars today, not much has changed. The same basic principles are still there. We just have some technology that for better or worse has pushed us along a little faster. Part of our sales process is, and even more so now because a lot of it happens online, is we know what you want to buy before you come in. Because you've told us, we've had the conversation. So we have the best available fit for you ready. You don't need 500 cars in stock to do that if you're a good salesperson, if you know your product. Everyone, anyone who's ever told me that, that buying a car isn't emotional, I tell them their trade is worth half what they thought it's worth. And then we see how emotional <laughs> one becomes in the transaction. But it's hard to get emotional about buying something that's not here. So that has really caused us to have to do a much better job at utilizing technology to still create that emotion. This business is still about, more than anything, people talking about cars. And it's been a change because it's easy to talk about something when there's so many of them out there. But it's also, it's helped in a lot of ways because now the point of purchase has become the point of visiting the dealership. The days of I'm gonna go to five different dealerships and shop, no one liked to do that. And I feel bad for people when they say I've been to nine dealerships. I just say that's 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 a tough day, man. That's a tough day because every day, time you go there, you're starting the same sales process <laughs> over again and again and again. You know, now because of the inventory issue, you can go to one store and you can do the transaction, which leads me to something I've touched on: the sales profession. Never, in my opinion, in the history of our industry, has the salesperson been so important. The customers that have not missed a beat will be able to get the car they want, get the deal that makes them happy, get the service they want. They're the ones that have the right salesperson. And one gentleman's office right there, he's been here for 38 years. He's been number one or number two every one of those years. And he does it for one reason, because his customers love him and he'll do anything for them. And I like to think that we have more of those type of people in this company than any other automotive group in the country. And I'm biased, obviously. but. You know, I have people that came to my first communion that are still selling cars here. They're members of my family. They're, you know, they, my kids call them uncle. That's something that in today's industry, you, it's very hard to find. But what we're really trying to do, and I got to compliment my cousins for this, is we're really doing, I think, a better job than we've ever done in the 83 years we've been in business. Is it 83 or 78? Uh, my grandfather would kind of fudge when the company was started, <laughs> so it was a sliding scale. But in the, about the 80 years we've been in business, 
I think we're doing the best job we've ever done of hiring people with no automotive experience, I'm talking none, and getting them to our level of how to treat a customer. And if you walk down, you know, I'll, I'll walk through with my wife and she goes, how oh, face is here? I'm like, yeah, he did 18 cars last month, he did 17, it's his fourth month, he did 24. And you know, she's been with me long enough to go, well, doesn't the average guy do like six? I said, no, not here. So that's been, uh, that's been another positive thing that's come about where we've, we've just reinvested in our people. Um, but as far as looking forward, I wish I could tell you, Jordan, that on November 15th, we'll have all the chips we need and the cars will start flowing and all will be good. But I, 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 we're gonna be dealing with this for a very long time. I don't know what this means, but we're gonna be dealing with this. We're gonna be dealing with some type of shortages where production, I don't think, I don't think anyone wants it to ever go back to what it was. Where, where manufacturers are producing so many cars and they sat on the lots and all that. But we also don't want it to be where it is now, where there's these egregious shortages. So I think we're gonna come to a type of balance where dealers will stock less, customers will really be encouraged to order what they want, and the manufacturers are spending billions of dollars to be able to produce a car faster. My grandfather in the 80s said he wanted to get a car here in I think 45 days from order to dealership lot. Didn't quite get it there, but he wanted that in the 80s. So maybe Pop was a profit in some ways, but th that that's the goal. And I, so we're never going to have these big, big, big supplies, but we're gonna we're gonna be better than we are now. I just don't know when, when that's going to happen. You know, COVID exposed a lot of weaknesses in how we built cars. It really did. But those once you identify the weakness, you just can't fixed. Hey, we fixed it now. We we build all the chips in America. Yay! We're talking billions and trillions of dollars of investment. And you, you just can't fake time, it takes time. So we're moving in the direction in this industry where a lot of the weaknesses that were exposed, we're gonna, they're gonna be mitigated. But when you have two years of disruptive production and all that pent up demand, you know, the, the average, on average, you know, 15 to 18 million new cars a year are sold in America. That's usually what the number ends up being. And during COVID, that number went down to, you know, 10, 11. We had some months that were, that they, they had the, the sales pace of 8 million car a month. So every month, people don't want to buy a car haven't been able to do it. So you have that pent up demand. Pent up demand with a shortage, that's, that's a tough thing to overcome. So we're going to be in something like this for the foreseeable future, but this will get better. Profit today, put us in a better position tomorrow. Now I'm not saying, we're not, we're not a charitable organization, we still have to make profit. I mean, I got I three kids I got to take care of. But as a family, we've always, put the customer first to the extent where it has to benefit the customer, it has to benefit our co-workers, and then it has to benefit the company. Yeah, well, Carl, thanks so much for uh, being on the auto show. We really appreciate having you. Thank you. Sorry for talking for four no, hours. great. <laughs> thanks. If you drive a Toyota and you're in an accident, it's important that you bring your car to a Toyota Certified Collision Center. It's important for everyone to understand not all collision shops are created equal. The public should be aware that only 10% of repair shops out there achieve any certification at all. Toyota's stringent certification program is widely recognized as having the highest standards in the industry. Some of the training required by Toyota certification program is very stringent. They come in and they expect us to do training and classes on the latest technology and all of the latest vehicles that are out there. Part of being in the Toyota Certified Collision Center is parts and proper installation of those parts. If the Toyota recommended procedure on a factory part, that's the part we're going to put in, whether the insurance company is going to pay for that part or not. In the Toyota Certified Collision Center, when you're repairing a Toyota car, and it's a safety related item, oftentimes there may be aftermarket parts that are written to the insurance estimate. At Toyota Dartmouth, we'll price match most of those parts when we can. Today's vehicles use advanced materials and safety features, but crumple zones, 
airbags, safety sensors, electronics, computers. Don't even get me going on the complexity of vehicles like the Toyota Prius Hybrid. Repairing these vehicles properly after a collision requires, no, make that mandates up-to-date training. As a Toyota certified shop, we require each of our technicians involved with collision repair to take ongoing training every year. This includes classrooms on new vehicle technologies and the latest factory recommended repair procedures. For instance, to remove and repair a rear bumper on a 2018 Camry is a 17-page procedure that a factory trained technician will use to do the repair correctly. Inside that bumper may be cameras, blind spot monitors, sensors, so it's important that that procedure be done by the recommended factory procedure. Oftentimes with these vehicles, there's all types of new advanced materials in their construction. Whether it's frame measuring equipment, welders specific for aluminum or high strength steels, or any other specialized tools, we have it all here. Let me tell you a little bit about our refinish process. Once your body work is done, it's ready for paint. We bring it into the other side, prep it all off, it goes into the booth. Now we have three size booths which are all downdraft state of the art booths. It circulates the air around and around, but nothing goes through the stack to the top. That's just for the fresh air to come in. A lot of people don't understand that waterborne paint doesn't have a lot of smell. You come into our shop, there's a smell. It's very environmental friendly. It's easy to put on and it gives you the factory finish that you would expect when you take the your vehicle. Being an accident is stressful, even if nobody gets hurt. At Toyota Dartmouth, we see this every day. We know how to get through it. We work with all the insurance companies. We're experts at navigating the insurance claim process. We also will keep you informed through text, email, phone calls. Any which way you want to be contacted, we'll keep you up to date with repair status. You know, a vehicle's a big investment. People are concerned about it, and they just want to know, when are they going to get it back, and is it going to be good, and is it going to be safe? We'll get you back as soon as we can, as fast as we can. Matter of fact, if you look at some of the industry uh, metrics from the insurance company who measure these type of uh, indicators, we're consistently two days faster than the average shop in our peer group. We are the only Toyota certified shop from Cape Cod all the way down to the Massachusetts border. Toyota Dartmouth is proud to be one of those select few. Priority Premium is New England's destination for exceptional Highline pre-owned automobiles. Our collection is hand-picked by New England's top automobile experts. With over 100 years of overall experience working with the world's finest brands, we find the best examples of well-maintained, low-mileage, luxury, and exotic vehicles for our inventory. Just go to PriorityPremium.com where you'll see our current selection. Stop dreaming, start driving. Priority Premium. Welcome back. We're here with Nick from Elmwood Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in East Providence and we're here to talk about the all new Wagoneer Series 2. Nick, it's a new vehicle for you guys. Uh, it's really, really striking to look at. Uh, a lot of new features. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so some of the big features on this vehicle are, is going to be the new LED front headlights and rear lights. Uh, so that's going to be quite bright so you can see at night. The little like hidden egg is a seven uh, frames in the grill. These are for the seven continents. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Jeep's conquering the world with this vehicle. Okay, neat. We can also see that we have the running side steps. This is going to be a feature that you get the standard, or you can also get the ones that deploy when we get in different packages. So they will actually disappear and come out when you open the door and close when you close the door. Nice. So this little box right here, that's going to be your adapter for cruise control, and it's also going to be your forward collision warning so okay. in case you're going too fast and you know you're looking out the window and the car stops front the car will actually break for you as well we're definitely not texting right yeah no not <laughs> texting and driving that's for sure i see we have a couple of different colors we have here yeah so base color is going to be your standard white color if we go over to that just to get a little idea what it's going to look like um nice. it's just going to be your bright white nice color so we have a decent amount of colors that you can pick from on the wagon here here are our three sets of wheels that you can that are offered with the Wagoneer Series 2. Um, starting with your standard wheel is going to be the 20 inch painted silver aluminum wheels. These are going to come with every single Wagoneer. And on top of those, you can actually upgrade them to the 18 inch off road aluminum wheels. It's going to give you that more sporty look, bigger tire profile, because um, 
obviously we're going to be going off-roading in this right <laughs> for camping sites and stuff like that sure and then lastly you're going to have your luxury 22 inch polished aluminum wheels and these are just going to give you that nice sharp look to a nice luxury car that this is nice and what kind of engine do we have in this so for the engine we're going to have a 5.7 hemi um it's going to have 392 horsepower you can use regular gas in it, which is great, especially with the economy right now. Sure. <laughs> and the engine's also gonna put an output of 10,000, up to 10,000 pounds of towing. So. Wow, that's great. Yeah, great for going on road trips with the family. So Nick, the new Wagoneer has a beautiful interior. I see we have a leather wrapped two spoke steering wheel, a nice center display screen. Uh, walk us through what we have here. Yeah, so starting with the center display screen, we're gonna have a really upscale, crisp, display screen we're going to see all the features um, right here as you can see it comes with apple carplay now this can be accessed via bluetooth or with the iphone cord it's also going to have android autoplay that way people with samsung's and androids can also utilize the carplay next on the screen we're going to have our heated seats and cooling seats so this is going to be standard in a lot of them um, you're going to have your cooling on the top and your heat on the bottom so you click those ones and you know summertime comes around it actually turns on the cooling seats for you automatically. Oh, and that's I, great. Yeah, and I can say the same for the winter time. When it hits a certain temperature and you remote start your car, it's actually gonna turn on the heat and the heat of steering wheel at the same time. It has a multi-link rear suspension. So this is actually gonna be a really comfortable ride. So these options are actually gonna come in handy. So when you're actually on the, off of the road, it's gonna be such a smooth drive you won't even notice. So here we have a gear selector. This is gonna be your park, reverse, neutral, and drive. So this is really nice function. It makes it really easy just to turn it to the gear you want. Next, all these cars are gonna have your push start, which is pretty standard now most of the days so having a push start. I hope every vehicle does have it. So this mirror starting here, we can actually get this to be a real live camera situated behind the car. So instead of having those glares and all that stuff that mm -hmm. back in the old days, flipping in it at nighttime, this will actually turn into a camera, eliminates all the glares. You can control the, this, the, uh, the height of it, you can make it lower oh, wow. or higher. So you can control it perfectly how you want it, change the brightness so it's not blinding. So you can't see the kids going like this. Can't see the kids going <laughs> like that. You can't even see yourself in it. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of that, we're gonna have our controls so, that uh, work our sunroof. This is gonna be a panoramic sunroof. You can also have the third piece in the back, which is really nice for your dogs. So it's gonna have a little sunroof back there. That one can't be moved, but that one's just nice to have for people sitting in the back seat. Sure. Speaking of the sun, I think there's the sun and sound package. Tell us about the sound on the wagon here. So this is actually gonna come with your optional Macintosh speakers. You have 19 of them and it's gonna be surround sound. So when I tell you this thing is gonna bump, it's gonna bump. That's great. Yeah, and <laughs> on top of that, you're gonna have your 10 inch subwoofer with your 950 watts. So when the bass kicks in, it's gonna vibrate the whole car. It's literally gonna feel like you're at a rock concert. So it's an unreal listen. Nick, thanks so much for coming down and showing us about the Wagoneer Series 2. Uh, I've already seen a few on the road. They look really, really awesome, and uh, we hope to have you back soon. Yeah, it was a pleasure talking about it, and thanks for having me. Of course. What does it mean that our customers are our owners? It means that we don't have shareholders like a bank. We have owners like you. And though we don't have traditional shareholders, we do share. We share values, expectations, and yes, profits in the form of better rates, lower fees, and dividends. Our customers are our owners. Our owners are our customers. Navigant Credit Union. Come join us. We're here today with Brian Benoit, Vice President of the Anchor Auto Group. Brian, thanks for having us here today. Thanks for having me. So Brian, there's a lot of buzz about buying a car online, having it dropped off of your house, the convenience of that with used cars. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I have a few thoughts. There are companies out there that are specializing in that these days. I think in theory it sounds good and there is a place for it and we here at the dealership and Anchor Auto Group have adopted some of those practices of doing things at home. We have a buy at home service. But I think you know, there's a lot of pitfalls in that. There's been a lot of things that have gone wrong. If you take some time and actually look at some of the reviews out there on some of these uh, Carvanas and Vrooms of the world, you'll, you'll see there's some things going wrong and there's some pretty big horror stories going wrong. Horror stories is the key word there. I saw people not getting cars with titles, sometimes taking six months, sometimes to a year, putting temp tags on cars and yeah. uh, you know, some not so great things happening. Yeah, those are some of the major uh, infractions that, that we're seeing. I think what people have to understand or think about is there's a little bit more going on here than 
going on Amazon and buying a pair of shoes that if it doesn't work out, you could just bring them over to Kohl's and drop them off and, and, and you're finished. Sure. I mean, you're talking about a major purchase where there's financing involved, there's registration work uh, and titling work that has to be done. And all of these things have a time frame that they have to be done by. Deeper rooted in that is what state are these cars coming from? What state is the entity from? What state is governing the actual particulars of the sale? Mm -hmm. And then what's going on in the state of the buyer in terms of getting it registered timely, making sure it's insured, and so forth. And then there's a, a whole host of issues with how is a used vehicle being prepped? Where was it sourced from? Who's preparing it? Who's calling the shots on whether or not this is actually a good car or a bad car? So again, if you you look at some of those reviews and there's not only paperwork problems, there's car quality problems, cars that have been totaled in accidents, cars that have been reported as stolen, having ended up wow. in these companies' hands and, and resold without titles, I might add. This is an automobile purchase, a legal purchase with a lot of contracts and a lot of things that a lot of moving parts that sure. if you don't know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing in a particular state, you can have you can have some big, big issues. Sure, and I know a lot of people, you know, you and I are in the car business, but uh, a lot of people, you know, they're like, oh, this is great, this seems really convenient, I don't want to go into the dealership, I don't want to have to haggle for the car, whatnot. Right. If you look at their commercials that they put out there, I, you know, they make it look like going into the big bad car dealership sure. from the 1970s and, and all of those things that go on. I mean, in reality, the truth of it is, there's more transparency in, in the auto business than just about any business you could, you could think of. The pricing is fully transparent. The transactions are fully transparent. We have more paperwork to protect consumers, probably as much if not more than purchasing a home. So there's, wow. there's a lot of protections. And, and most importantly, the overall protection of where that dealer is operating, in which state, and then the state protections. For instance, you have to be licensed to be an auto dealership in the state of Rhode Island, in the state of Massachusetts. In any state that I know of, you need to be licensed. Well, that license is controlled and governed by the state of Rhode Island, the Attorney General's Office, and the Dealer Commission. Now, these are people that control customer complaints. So there's a safety net out there, but the state of Rhode Island also has a separate division of the Attorney General's office, and it's the Dealer Commission. And that commission is made up of multiple people whose job it is 100% of the time to govern the licensed dealers, both new and used car dealers in the state of Rhode Island. If there are any issues or complaints or problems, the public can make a, a, a direct complaint to that division. They're not going through the big giant Attorney General's office, although the Attorney General's office oversees. There's a separate division just to handle that. So, you know, people in the state of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, they have somewhere to go um, if things aren't, you know, the way they should be or they don't think they're the way they should be. And we as dealers have to answer to them. You know, how are we handling online sales? We do a lot of online interactions with customers, but we're finding that most customers, 98% of customers, aren't even completely comfortable transacting the whole transaction completely online and not coming in and getting to see the car first and touch it and feel it and drive it. You know, we'll give them a tour of the dealership, we'll show them our service department, we'll talk about the level of our service technicians, how long they've been here, their level of expertise. So you're buying more than, than just the car. You're sure. buying the history of the car, you're buying the preparation of the car, you're buying our dealership in terms of being able to be here and stand behind you and stand behind the product that we're selling. In the days of coming into a dealership and spending four or five hours to buy a car, those, those days are gone. Um, That's I nice. Mean, yeah, it is nice, and it's nice for us. I mean, we, don't, we don't like long drawn out transactions any more than, than the customer does. Sure, and I don't know about you, but if I'm spending thirty or $40,000, especially on a used vehicle, I probably wanna take it for a ride or at least get my eyes on it before I make that purchase. Not everybody's like that, right. but I find um, it's, right. uh, that would be something that would be interest a lot of people. Yeah, and I think some, something that, that came along years ago that, that has sort of lulled some people to sleep are these, these Carfax reports, sure. these auto check history reports, for instance. 
I think a lot of people and, and, and their commercials will tell you, hey, just ask for the Carfax report. Just ask for the report. We've seen many, many Carfax reports that make a car look good on paper and then we find through our checks that there's, there's some big problems with it. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't get the Carfax. You absolutely should get a Carfax or any vehicle history report. That can't be the only thing you do. That can't be, this is how we verify whether or not this is a good car, what's on this piece of paper. You know, if you, if you look deep into a Carfax, that third page at the bottom, the disclaimer basically says, all we are is an information gathering company and th this is the information that we've gathered based on what's available at this time and here's what we found. That doesn't mean that three weeks later an accident that happened three months ago all of a sudden pops up and shows up and there's no protections for that sort of thing. But they also say in their disclaimer that they think it's a good idea that any used vehicle that you would consider buying you have checked out by an independent service center, mechanic or so forth and we support that. We, we certainly would let any of our vehicles be checked out by anybody off premises. So we like to say the vehicle history report is part of the process, but it is far from the entire process. The level of technician that we have working on these vehicles, being able to recognize body damage, frame damage, previous paint work, all those things are very, very important. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen to a car that may go unreported. So as we roll back to these, these online companies, we don't have a firm grip on who's actually looking at these cars, who's calling the shots on whether they're good cars or bad cars, where are they being prepared, what, what facility is preparing them, who's standing behind them. I mean, quite frankly, we have customers come in here to our dealerships with temporary plates on cars with Carvana plate frames on them that come in that have problems right off the bat. And they're looking for us to help them, and we do, and we do the best we can. But there's definitely that disconnect between, okay, who am I buying this car from, and then who do I lean on if there's an issue? And then, as I said earlier, the ultimate who do I lean on if there's a major issue comes down to state laws. And, and, and again, and with these companies, what state is governing the, the transaction? In the meantime, while all this is going on, you have the customer, you have the public who bought a car and now can they, can they use it, can they drive it? And there's plenty of stories out there where these cars are sitting in driveways for months on months on months, making payments and can't use it, can't get to work, have to keep insurance on it, who's responsible? A lot of finger pointing and not a lot of answers at this at this point. Sure. And could you just uh, touch on the benefits? You guys have an entire finance department, obviously, here at the Anchor, Anchor Auto Group, and people try to do things online, but a lot of times we're trying to register vehicles or just kind of putting your information out there. Um, how do you guys do it differently? Well, in, in terms of financing, and that's that's a biggie as well, because most of these transactions would would include some portion of financing. So you're filling out credit applications online. Where are those applications going? Who has access to that information? What banks are they going to? How many credit pulls are happening to you? Who's controlling all of that? Who are you asking those questions of? At the dealership level, we have a, a separate department that just handles credit applications, handles all the paperwork, handles registrations, all the legalities of getting the transaction done and done correctly, there's only a certain number of people, two, three, four people that have access to that information. In terms of doing it online, we have a separate portal, so when somebody goes on our website, fills out a credit application, that goes into a secure locked portal that goes right into the finance department. Their information isn't privy to anyone else in the dealership. Sure. And then from that portal, that information, that application gets dispersed to the bank or banks that we're going to be using. And then once the transaction is, is going to happen. We can do the transaction via DocuSign. We can do that through email if needed, or we can do it here through DocuSign in person. And again, more often than not, 98% of the time, with this type of transaction, most customers are more comfortable coming in, sitting down with the person who has all this information and can answer all of these questions and look at them one-on-one -on -one and spend, you know, 35, 40 minutes and just sign all the paperwork and leave with the copies, see the title, know we have the title, see all of the paperwork. We handle all of the registration from that point so they know everything's gonna get done in a, in a timely fashion. And to answer the 
registration question. We actually register in-house. We are online with the state of Rhode Island registry. And we have our own personnel in-house. So the paperwork never leaves here to get run down to the registry. The paperwork goes from our business manager's office into the office of our register and she handles all the registrations, whether it's a transfer, new plates, whatever the case may be, uh, we handle all right here. In terms of out-of-state registrations, we do either driving to those states, if they're local states, further states away, we'll use a uh, licensed uh, registry service, which we pay for to handle the transaction for us. But we are still in the middle of the transaction, making sure everything gets done and we have the plates, we have the registration, so forth. You know, I know this, we've been around here as a, as a local family-owned dealership. We're, we're heading for 35, 36 years right now. I don't think you can be around that long and be a viable dealership in a local community um, if you're doing things that, you know, happened in the 1970s. And those things aren't even allowed anymore, again, through all the, through all the laws and so forth. So it's just something people need to, need to think about, think about uh, both sides of it, and, and realize that in the end, They've got a lot of protections going through a dealership. They've got a lot of people they can talk to if things don't go correctly. So Brian, with the chip shortage and everything that's been going on and uh, low dealership inventory, usually you could come in on a Saturday and just pick out, I want a red one and drive off. Drive but away. now yeah. there's, uh, it's a little bit different. Tell us sure a, little bit, a little bit about that. Well, in the beginning, it was a shock to everybody. But I think for the most part, people have gotten used to or understand that they're probably not gonna come in find a car that they want and drive away on the same day. The ordering process, there's a little bit of misconception of what's going on with orders. Let me just say this, there are, cars are being built. Are they being built at the same rate as they were? Well, heck no. They're probably being built at 30, 35% of what normal capacity is. So there, there are cars coming, and we're operating now from selling vehicles that are on the incoming list. When somebody comes in to order a car, it really isn't a true order where the order's going all the way back to the factory, either in Indiana or in Japan or wherever, and the car is getting built from scratch, and then it's being put on a boat, and you know, it takes three months to get here through through you know the channels, and, and it arrives. I mean, orders are being placed and they're being filled based on cars that are already built and already on the way. There is still some time lag there. There's a six week or an eight week, but it's certainly not a six month or an eight month wait to get cars in. It's not the worst thing in the world for people as long as they've got a little bit of time to deal with. And, I, and we've seen a lot of people sort of push up their, their shopping window. So instead of waiting till the week they need the car and start shopping for it, most customers are, are just finding their way into the market a little sooner, doing the, the, the shopping work or the test driving and so forth ahead of time and, and know that they need to wait a little bit to get the vehicle. On the plus side, they're getting exactly what they want and exactly the color they want, and um, it gets delivered fresh, peel the plastic off, and, and there's their car. So it's changed the way things have worked, but it's gone pretty smoothly. So that's our show for today. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.